friends, peace be with you. Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Today, we will learn more about three other fruit of the Spirit. Let's first begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, thank you for being so generous with your unconditional love through Jesus. Jesus, teach us to be pure, holy, and generous so that we can bear the fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You must be walking closely with Jesus this week. So let's sing this song to praise and thank our great big God for being there for us. Our God is a great big God. Big, big, big. 
Hi children! Today, we're going to share with you another three fruit of the Spirit. The first is generosity. We are generous when we give ourselves willingly and cheerfully for the good of others. We can be generous with our time by spending it with someone who is sad or playing with them. We can be generous with our food or things by sharing with those who have less than us or the poor. Now let's ask Jesus to give us a heart of generosity by praying this prayer. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to hate the ones. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your holy will. Amen. Children, no matter what you are giving or sharing, when you are generous, you are giving others Jesus because you are loving them like how Jesus would. So, be glad when you can be generous. As 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. So let's sing this song with joy and cheer in our hearts to remember God's word. John, how was your day in school? Good. Okay. Wow. Are you that hungry? Yeah, I'm starving. Mm. I forgot to bring the snacks that you packed for me for snack break. Oh, right. And I just couldn't wait for school to end. So I bought these snacks. Oh, that's quite a lot of snacks though. I mean, just spoil your lunch appetite, you know. And remember we have to take good care of ourselves and not eat unhealthy food. Sorry, Mom. In my hunger, I forgot that my body is a gift from God and I must take care of it. I'm sorry, Mom. It's okay. From time to time, we do forget these things. But, you know, it's important that we eat well and drink well so that we take care of ourselves and our bodies. Yeah? And we want to be healthy also and not fall sick so that we can be strong and have the energy to do good for others. Like helping around with the household chores or giving others a hug. Thank you for the reminder, Mom. I guess I just got too carried away. I'll save this snack for another time. <laughs> John, wait a minute. Why are you watching? I don't think you should be watching this. But why? It's funny. Um, the actors are using unkind words and bad language. What they say and do do not show any respect for themselves or for others. And they do not give glory to God. Oh yeah, I remember what mom said about the Holy Spirit living in us. Mm. Our body is the gift from God, so we should give thanks to Him by doing and saying things to that glorify Him. That's right. We can ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of right judgment to tell right from wrong so that we can bear the fruit of chastity in our lives. Chastity is being pure and holy in our thought, word and deed. We need to guard what we think, hear, say and do so that our bodies can be an expression of God's love for everyone. So, let's now sing this song to ask Jesus to direct our every move to love Him and others. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So with all your mind and with all your strength. 
children, come join us when we sing I will love you, you echo the words and actions I will love you. When we sing I will serve you, you echo I will serve you. Are you ready? Let's do this together. heard the kids talking about the fruit of chastity earlier on. I'm so proud of them for remembering that we are made with goodness and love. So, how else can we use our bodies to show God's love to others? Modesty is another fruit of the Spirit. Modesty is when we show the purity of our heart in action. We are modest when we dress appropriately. We also show modesty when we are slow to speak instead of being too eager to talk about ourselves or bragging about our talents and what we have achieved. Children, chastity, modesty and generosity may not be in the list of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5.22. But the Catholic Church teaches us that if we walk in the Spirit, we will grow in these three fruits too. It can be difficult and challenging growing in the Spirit, but let's listen to how we can bear this challenge. The ox is one of the most hard-working land animals in the world. They are strong and trained to carry heavy loads from a young age, but they don't do this alone. They have an older ox to help them. A wooden beam known as a yoke is placed on the oxen's necks and they plough the fields together. The work they do helps the farmers to grow the food that we eat. It is definitely not easy work, but they have each other. Children, just like how the older ox walks with the younger calf, Jesus is walking with us on this journey of growing in the Spirit. He assures us of His love. This is what Jesus means in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We can always turn to Jesus for strength and He will make our load easier to bear. Let's continue to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to guide us in our lives and we will know that the Holy Spirit is working in us by the fruit that we bear. Keep working at it. Now, let's sing this song to help us remember the fruit of the Spirit. Ready? Okay! Love, joy, peace, gracious kindness, goodness, faithfulness to woohoo, gentleness, and self-control, chastity, modesty, generosity. With God's Spirit, how about you? We got the fruit, yeah, yeah, fruit of the Spirit. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah, this is how we live. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah, fruit of the Spirit. The gifts that only God can give. Well, it's easy to 
you get mad when things don't go your way. It's easy to get angry when you're having a bad day. It's easy to be mean when people do you wrong. It's easy to complain when you just can't get along. But there's a better way. The spirit can help you when you pray. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit always do. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. This is all we We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit. The gifts that only God can give. But it's easy to be selfish when we need to give away. It's easy to run when you know you need to stay. Instead of staying until the end It's easy to argue Instead of speaking like a friend But there's a better way The Spirit can help you when you pray We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit We got the fruit, yeah, yeah This is all we We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit The gifts that only God can give For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. Oh, and mummies and daddies, don't forget to access Little Faith Steps' Facebook page during the week. We'll be posting the worship songs there. Look out for them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. Hi everyone. Today I'm thinking of a word we say every time we pray. It's not God, not Jesus, it's Amen. Do you know what it means? Amen is a Hebrew word which means I believe. So when we respond with Amen, we're really saying, I agree with what I have just heard or said. We hear Amen used in the earliest books of the Bible. It's the very last word of the last book of the Bible. Our Jewish and Muslim friends use this word just like we do. There is a very special moment at Mass when we say Amen. When we go up to receive Holy Communion, we look at the host and we hear the words, The Body of Christ. And we say Amen, meaning, Yes, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. It is a beautiful opportunity for us to profess our faith. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, our brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about how to love ourselves and others through modesty, chastity and generosity. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 18th July 2021. We offer up this Mass for those who are lost or far from God, that they may accept direction from the Good Shepherd. 
Join us in singing the processional hymn. This Eucharistic celebration as we bless ourselves in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate the 16th Sunday in ordinary time. We come before the Lord as we hear in the scriptures today that sometimes we are like sheep that are lost, sheep that have gone our own way, and it is the Lord who comes to rescue us. We, that lost sheep, because of our own weaknesses, come before God, needing His healing, needing His mercy. And so let us acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Show favor, Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Doom for the shepherds, who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnant of my flock, I myself will gather from all the countries where I have dispersed them and bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and pasture them. No fear, no terror for them anymore. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks when I will raise a virtuous branch for David, who will reign as true king and be wise, practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord, our integrity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is a peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single, new man in his self out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace, Peace to you who are far away, and peace to those who are near at hand. Through him, both of us have in the one spirit our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town, they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel, we see the, the theme about sheep and shepherds. Jesus took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. What happens to sheep without a shepherd? I went to go online, I used Google, and I typed in what happens to sheep without a shepherd, brought me to a farming website. And an expert was saying, sheep without shepherds, especially domestic sheep that we normally see, unlike wild sheep, they are not able to live on their own. Wild sheep, though not many, are adapted to live on their own, but the domesticated ones, the ones that we see in the farms, are dependent on the shepherd. Dependent on the shepherd to bring them to pastures, to feed on grass, for water, dependent on the shepherd for protection, protection from wild animals, from predators. But the most important thing why they need a shepherd is for maintenance. And this is where I learned something new. Sheep, wild sheep, they grow their fleece, their wool every year. And after winter, when it gets warmer, the, the fleece 
will automatically fall off and then they will regrow it the next year. But the domesticated sheep that we see in the farms are those that are specially bred because their fleece does not fall off. And it requires the farmer or the shearer to go and shear the wool off them every time it reaches spring. And if this is not done by the shepherd, if the sheep just continue and you will realize that the wool will just keep growing and growing. And so the article brought me to this picture of a famous sheep in New Zealand called Shrek. He became so big because he somehow got lost from the flock. He went into hiding and for six years, his wool was not sheared. And he kept growing and growing until you can see in the picture, right? The before and the after. They finally found him. He was so full of wool. The wool was all matted. And when they sheared it off him, they got nearly 30 kilograms of wool. Nearly, almost more than twice his weight. I don't know if you know of anybody who during COVID never cut their hair. Maybe, you know, sometimes we get locked up and then uh, we keep, the hair keeps growing. So imagine for this sheep, six years worth of wool. Carrying that wool, walking around. You can see in the picture, the wool is even covering his eyes. And probably he was lucky to be discovered at that time because a sheep that has so much wool would suffer because of heat, right? Uh, when this, the, it's not able to cool down. It's so heavy that its legs will start to be a struggle to carry the weight. And it's also hard to move around. It may be attacked by uh, predators. But Shrek was lucky enough to survive for six years. But what about those that are not so lucky? You know, why did Jesus use the, the image of sheep? The people were like sheep without a shepherd because a sheep without a shepherd can easily get lost. A sheep without a shepherd can be, uh, fall into harm's way. And that's the thing about sheep. They are easily distracted. They're just concentrating on eating and when the whole flock moves, you know, maybe you found some grass so delicious that and then you go and say, where is the flock? Where is the shepherd? And thus, I invite you to think, right? I'm sure you know of the Gospels. Jesus uses sheep quite often. Where in the Gospels? What are the stories about sheep? We have the parable of the lost sheep. We have the image of the good shepherd, Jesus being the good shepherd who calls the sheep that belong to him. And finally, we have the image when Jesus, after his resurrection, was talking to Peter, right? And he said, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. And what did Jesus say? feed my sheep. And so we want to use these three different parables of the different parts of the gospel to reflect what, why is it important to know that we are lost sheep, why we need a shepherd. The parable of the lost sheep, Matthew chapter 18, it says, if a man has a hundred sheep, one of them goes astray, Will he not leave the 99 in the hills and go in search of the stray? One lost sheep and the shepherd will go and seek it out. And I think the question for us is, are we lost? Do we recognize that we are lost? You know, 
there's this uh, example that happened to me. You know, we think that sheep are the ones that easily get lost. Once, a few years ago, when we could still travel, I went to Spain and I did uh, a pilgrimage walk called the Camino, Camino de Santiago, where we would walk a few hundred kilometers or I did 120 kilometers. Some people do more until we reached the town called Santiago in Spain. And so there was this group of us that were walking. After the first day, we realized different people walk different pace. And so we said we will split up into uh, different groups and the faster walkers can walk first and reach the town. The slower walkers will catch up later. In our group of 13, there was one family, father, mother, and a young daughter. And she was the youngest one among the group. On some days, she would walk with her parents. Some days, she would walk with other people. And so there was this one day we were walking. We had lunch, we stopped for lunch, and after that, we moved on. I was walking in front, her parents were walking behind. Apparently, she told her parents, oh, I'm going to walk with father, I will catch up with him. And so she walked ahead because the parents were slower and she started to uh, come to follow me who was walking with another group. But we didn't know that she was going to want to join us and she could not catch up with us. So when we reached the town and we stopped, we returned and uh, went to the place to stay, we waited for everybody to come. The parents came and they said, like, hey, where's my daughter? And we said, isn't she walking with you? She said, no, she said she's walking with you. And we realized we had lost. At that time, I think she was 13 years old or 14 years old. Wow. Then we panicked and we went around to find this lost sheep. We went backwards, we went forwards, and finally we found her. The, the hotel owner took his van and went along the road and he found her still walking along. In front of her, there were two other ladies who were not our group, but they were walking and they did not stop in the town that we stopped at. And she was happily walking behind them. She did not know that she was lost. And I think this it was stuck with me that many times we can be like this girl or we can be like the sheep who don't even know that we are lost until the shepherd or until the parents come and look for us. Are we lost? Do we recognize that we need guidance? Or do we, are we happy to do whatever we want? Or maybe like this girl who was following other people and did not know that we had stopped at the town. Sometimes we may follow other people. My friend does this, so I, can, I also want to do this. My friend says this, right? Why can't I do this? I still remember growing up among the parents, there was always this saying, your friend go and jump, you also go and jump, right? Are we being led astray by other people? Are we being guided to walk the correct path? So first and foremost, are we lost? Have we gone astray? Do we recognize and do we want to allow God to find us? Shrek, the sheep, was lost for six years because he was hiding in the caves, he was away from the flock, and he never thought to go and find help, right? Until somebody saw him and rescued him. And so for us, the first reflection, am I lost? Do I want to be found? Is the life I'm leading following God or am I following other people? Do I recognize that in being lost, 
right? There are things which are happening to me which are not going to make me happy. The next one that we have, Jesus tells us about the parable of the Good Shepherd. He says, I am the Good Shepherd. A Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And so for us, it's not just about if we are lost, hopefully we want to be found. But now the question would be, how not to get lost? How not to get lost is that we must listen to the shepherd. We must recognize the voice of what is good, what is right, so that we do not go astray. So who are the shepherds in our lives? We can say, yes, I listen to Jesus, I read the Bible, but God has given to us other shepherds, right? In the first reading we see that God tells even the people of Israel in the Old Testament, I will raise up shepherds for my people. And so of course, in the church, we have the priests, but we also have the parents. Parents have the role to be your shepherds, to protect you, to feed you, to nourish you, to guide you along the right path. There is always the temptation to disobey. There is always the temptation that I want to do whatever I want to do. The temptation to be like other people. But do we recognize that our parents love us? Do we recognize that our parents want what is good for us? And sometimes even though we don't want to, it is better to listen. Do we listen? How do we listen to the voice of God? Are we praying? Are we reading the scriptures so that God can speak to us? If not, we won't be able to recognize his voice. And the last one, John's Gospel, chapter 21, when Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? And he says, feed my sheep, tend to my sheep, feed my lambs. Three times Jesus asked Peter, three times he said, look after my sheep. And that is where for us too, if we are called to be disciples, if we say, I love God, I love Jesus, God is also asking us, now you are a sheep that I have love. You are a sheep that follows me. Will you go and look after the other sheep? Will you go and keep the other sheep safe? You know, as reading about the sheep, sheep without shepherd would follow the leader generally, right? The problem is if the sheep, if the leader goes lost, everybody goes lost. Why did the shepherd leave the 99 to go and look for the one? It's because he knows the 99 at that moment, for that moment, would be able to look after themselves. And so for us too, we are called to be sheep that keep others safe. We're called to be sheep that shepherd others. And it is also where we need to realize, right, that we need more people to be answering God's call. When Jesus sees the crowd and says they are like sheep without shepherd, in another gospel, in Matthew's gospel, he says, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. We need to have also sheep that will step up to be shepherds, right? That's why on Good Shepherd Sunday, we talk about vocations. Are there any of you feeling the call to be shepherds? But not just shepherds as priests, but shepherds in the church, in leader, as leaders, right, as guides on different levels. All of us have a part to play, not just to be blind, you know, sheep just following, but to be guiding others. In this time of COVID, in this time when we are watching masses online, the reality is there are others who have stopped going to church. There are others who don't even watch mass online. And it's not just about watching mass online. It's really about 
do I feel that I need God in my life? COVID has made us realize, hopefully, that we need God. COVID has made us realize that some of us are lost sheep. And God is asking us, who will go to rescue them? Who will recognize that there are so many who are like sheep without a shepherd? Shrek was able to be identified because it had grown its wool to be so big. But the lost sheep of the world, the lost people, are not so easy to recognize by the external appearance, but really about how lost we are in our lives. So let us pray. We pray for ourselves to recognize that we are lost sheep, that we need God, that we need to be guided. We pray that there will be more shepherds to step up, to lead and guide the sheep. We pray that we too will always be looking out for others who are sheep, who are lost, sheep who are without a shepherd. Amen. And so having heard the word of God, let us respond by professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's love for us is represented in the Good Shepherd's care for his flock. Trusting in this love, we confidently offer our prayers of petition before him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, all priests and clergy, that they be strengthened in their ministry of being the shepherds of the flock of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they selflessly strive to find ways of bringing peace to our world for the benefit of all humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek refuge from violence, war, poverty, hunger, or abuse, that they may find places of welcome and relief, shelter and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who feel lost, abandoned, or alienated from society, that the gospel inspire us all to reach out to them as shepherds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and peace for the sick and suffering members of our families and faith community, especially those severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for religious life or priestly vocation, 
that they will have wise guides on their way to lifelong service of God and the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our heart, we pray for our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you shepherd your people with loving care and are ever at our side. Receive our prayers from all who seek your guidance and support. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and took willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And so I invite you as you partake in spiritual communion with us, that you take this time to pray. Pray that you recognize how much you are a lost sheep needing Jesus. Or pray that the Lord will use you to guide others back to Him. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, Thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all things and I desire to receive You into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to listen to the Good Shepherd 
and to guide others to come and hear the good news. Thanks be to God. everyone. So Keith, hmm? do you know what a catalyst is? I do. In fact, a catalyst is when a substance meets another substance and without changing properties, they interact with one another and then they, when they do that, there's a reaction and then there's a... That's right. Exactly like that super scientific definition. A catalyst is an agent of change and it's something that's very necessary in our faith, you know? Yeah. And in fact, all of us would have had catalyst that has made some sort of difference in our lives. A person, a priest, a teacher, a friend, a family member, a dog, no, maybe not the last one, but someone who has come to us, had that interaction, nudged us a little bit and enabled us to grow in our faith just a little bit. And then what happens? So today we are inviting you to be the catalyst in someone's life, that Catholic holy saint to spark a change and to provoke someone on their journey in faith. Join us online at the New Evangelization Conference on the 24th of July. Keith, do you see our lineup of speakers? Yes, excellent. We have amazing speakers, a great lineup who will share with you, drawing from scripture and their lives, how we can evangelize in our world today. So register now. Registration is open. Register now in the link and join us on the 24th. We will see you. Be a catalyst. Tula. You must know that even though you have sufferings, even in difficult times and good times, God is always beside you, carrying the cross with you. My name is Generios. I'm now 10 years old and I'm in Catholic High. Two years ago, I had cancer. My cancer was a blood cancer because my bone marrow did not produce good cells. 
I was very weak and I was not able to even walk. My liver was badly inflamed and I had to take morphine because the pain was too intense. Last time I had no faith and I was not really that close to God and I didn't really believe and have faith and even though I pray I, I don't really like pay much attention to God. I remember while sleeping, I suddenly saw an image of Jesus walking in the room that I was sleeping in. Then he, his image changed to become carrying the cross. Then he told me that he will be carrying the cross with me. From there, I start to know that God is present in my life, so I trust everything in Him. So there's different types of chemo. One is like drip chemo. So it's like they will poke my pot. From there, they will link the medication and they will let it go inside my body. This chemo is very painful because they will poke your arm and then they will give the medication and this medication will make your muscle ache. I see many patients when they go through this, they usually scream until the whole world can heal. But instead, I use this screaming to pray the Hail Mary. And eventually, I found out that the pain is not really that pain. The last good news was I need to take any more chemos. And the other one is they told me that I can eat any food. Because before that, I was restricted from some food, like those type of exposed food, and especially food that is kept in the fridge for very long. But now the doctor say that I can eat any type of food. Wish to become a friar so that I can bear witness to the creation, to let them know about who is God, so that the world will convert and return to God. The word of God that I think is really present is Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. It's the one that Jesus said, Man, this is impossible, by God, all things are possible. This phrase to me is very strong because during my leukemia time, it seems impossible to battle through this leukemia. But I realize it's possible only if you have faith and believe in God. Let us participate in this historic celebration to ignite and shine with faith in all that we do. For more information, scan the QR code or visit catholic200.sg. First time in our history, public masses closed, our gates were locked, and our churches were empty. But in adversity, we responded as one with creativity, zeal and fortitude. Stepping out of our comfort zones and rising up to bring Jesus to all, just like the Christians before us. In this season, we have embraced change to continue the life-giving work of Christ. New evangelization is to make sure the gospel permeates every sector of society. To deepen and grow our faith. To bring the good news to all. To encourage each other in prayer to form our young, to build our communities, and reach out to one another. New ways to encounter Jesus, new ways to bring us together, not physically, because the real unity is a spiritual unity. 
we continue to live the kind of life that people can see that we are transformed, that we are alive, that even in such a situation, we see the Lord Jesus giving us life and we are continuing to give life to others. to come together as one family, to face the challenges of a new normal. As the doors of our church open once more, there will be more challenges to come. Let us as one body be united with the spirit of fortitude to rise up and give of our time, talents and treasures to build a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. Our church has gone through many milestones in her life and there is much to be thankful for as we look back on the many sacrifices that were made to build the church that we have today. As our church strives to continue to rise above the current, may our hearts burn with love and zeal to grow and enliven the lives of the many people. Let us reignite and shine our faith by supporting our church as her mission is still very much growing and now more than ever needs your support.